Hello and welcome to my channel. This is part four of my new player series for the Guardian profession. This is an introduction for new and returning players in the hope of saving them many hours of research on the Guild Wars 2 wiki. In part one, we covered the profession's archetype, history and overall game style. In part two, we talked about the Guardian's unique abilities and utility slot skills. And in part three, its current weapons and their mechanics. Now, here in part four, we will dive into the Guardian's current specializations and their related traits. We will also explore four viable builds for PvP, World v World, Raids and Fractals, all sourced from the brilliant community resources of Quantify and Metabattle. In previous videos, I've used screen-grabbed graphics from Guild Wars 2 to represent skills and traits. I worry I may have been misleading you. The text shown on them may have been different from the script, and these differences will have arisen from my armor stats, trait selections, and sometimes even the location, because of the variation between PvP traits and PvE traits. So to hopefully improve your experience, I have stripped my poor guardian down to her leaves and unequipped every item of gear and left unspent as many traits as possible. The traits and skills should now reflect the unmodified information you find on the wiki, hopefully avoiding confusion. I will ensure to do this for all the guides going forward and I thank you for putting up with my oversight. So let's jump into it. This section is going to be long and detailed, so please do not try to sit through it in one session. As with all my content, there are timestamps below in the description, so you can use them to jump to the sections you are interested in. Alternatively, you can use this as an aid to sleep. It's your call really, but you have been warned. The Guardian has five core specialisations and one elite specialisation. You unlock these specializations as you level, and by the time you reach 80, you will have unlocked all the core lines. Heart of Thorns players are able to use the Elite Specialization Dragon Hunter, giving you access to the longbow weapon, new traits, modified virtue mechanics, and trap skills. Each profession line has three fixed traits and nine optional traits. However, you can only use three of the nine optional traits at any one time. You can see all your specialization lines by opening your character window like this, and you can equip them here in your build tab like this. The core specializations are Zeal, Radiance, Valor, Honor, and Virtues. Starting with Zeal, whose traits focus on the weapons Greatsword and Scepter, and the utility Spirit Weapon skills. The fixed traits for Zeal are Zealot Speed creates a symbol of wrath when you are struck whilst below the health threshold of 75%. The symbol itself has a radius of 180, pulses for time, and grants up to 5 allies retaliation for 2 seconds. It also deals damage on up to 5 foes inside its radius as it pulses. Symbolic exposure causes all your symbols to apply 3 seconds of vulnerability to foes in their radius, increasing flat and condition damage by 1% inside the symbol. Symbolic power increases by 10% the damage dealt by symbols and increases their critical hit chance by 33%. This trait also applies one second of burning to enemies caught inside your symbol's radius. The optional zeal traits are as follows. Wrathful Spirit grants four seconds of retaliation when your boon Aegis ends. This effect is also granted to allies with whom you have shared Aegis. Fiery Wrath increases damage against burning foes by 7%, but does not increase the burning condition damage itself. Zealot's Scepter allows the Guardian, whilst wielding a Scepter, to gain two stacks of Might for 10 seconds, when the passive effect of the Virtue skill Justice triggers. Binding Jeopardy will either immobilize or blind a foe as it applies three stacks of vulnerability to them for eight seconds. 
Zealot's Blade focuses on enhancing the Greatsword. Selecting this trait will grant 5% additional damage for this weapon and offers modest healing on you when you are attacking with the Greatsword. This trait also reduces the cooldown on Greatsword skills by 20%. The Kindled Zeal trait grants condition damage based on your power, converting 10% of your power stats to condition damage. Expeditious Spirit focuses on enhancing spirit weapons. It adds 3 seconds of burning to foes damaged by spirit weapon attacks. It also reduces by 20% the recharge of spirit weapon skills and command skills. You should note the Bow of Truth only benefits from the reduced skill cooldown as the weapon itself does not deal damage to enemies. Shattered Aegis damages up to 5 enemies in a radius around you of 240. When a charge of Aegis you apply blocks an attack. Symbolic Avenger increases your damage by 10% to enemies standing inside your symbol's radius. The Radiance line focuses on enhancing the weapon's sword and torch, as well as virtues and signet skills. Its fixed traits are Justice is Blind. This is aptly titled as it blinds up to 5 targets for 3 seconds when you activate Virtue of Justice. The Renewed Justice trait recharges the skill Virtue of Justice when you kill a foe. This trait function has been known to fail, so you should bear that in mind. Radiant Power increases critical hit chance by 10% against burning foes. The Radiance optional traits are Inner Fire, which grants 8 seconds of fury when you strike a foe, but only when they have 3 stacks of burning, which are causing at least 452 damage on them. Right Hand Strength increases the critical hit chance of one-handed weapons by 15%, and Sword Skills see a 20% reduction to their recharge time. The Healer's Retribution trait grants 5 seconds of retaliation when you use a healing skill. Wrath of Justice When the activated effect of your Virtue Skill Justice is used, it triggers Signet of Wrath, immobilizing your target for 3 seconds, rendering them unable to move. Radiant Fire allows you to gain Zealot's Flame for 3 seconds when you critically hit a target. This burns enemies for 7 and a quarter seconds and increases burning duration by 20%. This trait also reduces the recharge of torch skills by 20%. Retribution grants 10% increased damage whilst under the effect of retaliation. Amplified Wrath increases burning damage by 15% and applies 2 seconds of burning on enemies whose attacks you have successfully blocked. Perfect Inscriptions grants Light Aura when activating a Signet. Light Aura grants 2 seconds of retaliation and if you are struck whilst affected by Light Aura, enemies suffer 8 seconds of vulnerability. Signet skills also see their recharge rate reduced by 20% and see a 20% improvement to the passive effect of Signet skills. Radiant Retaliation sees a retaliation damage scale from condition damage instead of power. This relates to stats found on your equipment, so think about using Vipers and Sinister stats to take the best advantage of this trait. Valor focuses on enhancing the weapon's focus and shield and meditation skills. The fixed Valor traits are as follows. The Valorious Defense trait grants 5 seconds of Aegis when you are struck whilst below the health threshold of 50%. Courageous Return recharges Virtue of Courage when you revive an ally or when you rally from the down state, allowing you to subvert its internal cooldown. Might of the Protector grants two stacks of might for 15 seconds when you block an attack. The optional traits are Strength of the Fallen allows you to lose a condition every 10 seconds and slows health degeneration while in the down state by 33%. 
Smiter's boon cures two conditions and damages up to five foes in a radius of 360 around you when you use a healing ability. The damage output of this trait is doubled if a condition is cured. Focus Mastery grants 4 seconds of protection when using focus abilities, as well as reducing the recharge rate of focus skills by 20%. Stalwart Defender grants 140 additional toughness whilst wielding a shield and reduces the recharge rate of shield skills by 20%. Whilst in combat, the Strength in Numbers trait grants you and allies around you in a 600 radius additional toughness up to a maximum of 150 for 6 seconds in 3 second intervals. This trait does not stack, so allies near multiple guardians with this trait only receive its effect once. Communal Defense grants 5 seconds of ages to allies when you block an attack in a radius of 360. Please note, the trait does not grant Aegis to the Guardian, only to your allies. The Altruistic Healing trait grants personal healing on the Guardian when you grant a boon to allies. This trait triggers healing for every boon applied, so when applying area of effect boons, this trait will trigger healing for each ally affected, including yourself. This works on skills that apply boons repeatedly over time, such as symbols, and also skills that apply multiple stacks of might and stability, all triggering the healing of this trait. With the Monk's Focus trait, using meditation skills heals you and grants 4 seconds of fury to up to 5 allies in a radius around you of 240. It also reduces the recharge rate of meditation skills by 20%. The Retributive Armour trait grants 250 toughness for 5 seconds after blocking an attack. It also grants ferocity based on a percentage of your total toughness. Honour enhances the weapons, mace and staff as well as a symbol and shout skills. Its fixed traits are Vigorous Precision which grants 5 seconds of vigour when you critically hit your foe. Selfless Daring heals you and up to four nearby allies in a radius around the Guardian of 240 at the end of your dodge roll. Purity of Body allows your Virtue of Resolve's passive effect to also increase the regeneration rate of Endurance by 15%. Invigorated Bulwark grants increased healing power for 30 seconds each time you block an attack whilst wielding a mace. The effect can stack up to 10 times. This trait also reduces the recharge rate of mace abilities by 20%. The Protective Reviver trait creates a shield of absorption when you begin reviving an ally. If you successfully revive your ally, you and they gain 10 seconds of ages, protection and regeneration. This trait also increases the speed you can revive allies by 10%. The Protector's Impact trait reduces fall damage by 50% and creates a symbol of protection when you do take falling damage. The symbol lasts for 2 seconds and grants protection for 1 second to up to 5 allies in its 180 radius. The Honourable Staff trait increases boon duration whilst wielding a staff by 20% and reduces the recharge rate of staff skills by 20% as well. There is a known bug in the game, so the tooltip does not reflect the boon duration increase. Empowering Might grants 5 seconds of might on up to 5 allies in a radius around you of 240 when you land a critical hit. Pure of Heart allows any Aegis boon you have to heal you when it blocks an attack. It matters not whether you apply the boon to yourself or are gifted it by others. Pure of Voice reduces the recharge rate of shout abilities by 20% and allies affected by your shouts have a condition converted to a boon. Here is a list of boon conversions for your reference. Writ of Persistence increases the duration of symbols by 2 seconds and increases their area of effect by 60. 
It also grants modest healing to allies stood inside your symbols. Blip, pop, pop. Focus of will increases vitality by 300, which increases your health pool. It also increases your healing output to allies based on a percentage of your vitality. For every 100 vitality, you gain 1% outgoing healing. The Virtues line enhances Hammer, Concentration Skills and Virtue Skills. Its fixed traits are Inspired Virtue allows the active boons granted from using your virtues to apply to your allies. This can affect up to 5 allies and are as follows. When you activate Justice, you and they gain 3 stacks of might for 5 seconds. For Resolve, you and they gain 5 seconds of regeneration. And finally, for Courage, you and they gain 5 seconds of protection. Virtue of Retribution grants you 3 seconds of retaliation when you activate a Virtue. And retaliation you apply lasts for 25% longer. Power of the Virtuous grants 1% increased damage for each boon you currently have active on you and allows Virtues to recharge 15% faster. Unscathed Contender increases your damage output by 20% whilst you are under the effect of Aegis. The Retaliatory Subconscious Trait grants you 3 and 3 quarter seconds of retaliation and 4 seconds of Aegis when you are stunned, dazed, knocked back, pulled, sunken, floated, launched, taunted, or feared. The Master of Consecration Trait increases consecration skills duration by 2 seconds and reduces their recharge rate by 20%. The Virtuous Solace trait activates when you are struck whilst under the health threshold of 25%. Once struck, it creates a protective area at your location, which neither foes nor projectiles can enter. This protection lasts for 4 seconds and grants healing on up to 5 allies. Absolute Resolution focuses on boosting the passive effect of Virtue of Resolve by 20% and also removes up to 3 conditions on nearby allies when you use its activated effect. Conditions are only cured in Resolve's radius. Glacial Heart increases the critical hit chance on enemies with the Hammer Chill effect by 50% and reduces the recharge of Hammer Skills by 20%. This skill can trigger on any attack whilst wielding the hammer, not just hammer skills. With Permeating Wrath, instead of applying a burning condition to your foe, the effect allows you to burn the area around your target for 2 seconds. This effect can trigger 3 times, hitting up to 5 targets in a radius of 240. Battle Presence shares the passive healing effect of Virtue of Resolve to up to 5 allies, applying the effect every 3 seconds in a radius around you of 600. The last optional trait is Indomitable Courage, which modifies the active effect of Virtue of Courage, adding a stun-breaking mechanic to it. It also grants 3 stacks of stability for 4 seconds to allies in a radius of 600. With this trait, Virtue of Courage passive effect triggers more frequently. Heart of Thorns players who have unlocked and equipped the Dragon Hunter specialization have lots of new toys to play with. This line not only unlocks the longbow, but also sees virtues modified to reflect the new playstyle and gives access to trap skills. So let's jump into the new trait line which supports these tasty new mechanics. Virtuous Action changes your virtues into their new active form for the Dragon Hunter. As soon as you equip Dragon Hunter in your build tab, this trait is activated. The Defender's Dogma description is a little word salady. What happens is, when you block an attack, it causes Spear of Justice active effect to trigger when you next attack. Pure of Sight simply encourages you to attack at range. By increasing the amount of damage you do, the further away you are. At 0 to 600, you get a flat buff to your damage of 7%, but at over 600 range, you will see a 13% boost to outgoing damage. 
optional traits for the Dragon Hunter. Piercing Light adds one and a half seconds of slowing condition to traps triggered and reduces trap skill recharge rates by 20%. Dulled Senses has two mechanics. It applies four seconds of cripple to enemies you knock down and any enemies who are crippled have eight seconds of vulnerability gifted to them. This skill also triggers on pulled and launched enemies. Soaring Devastation adds damage and three seconds of immobilization when you use the active mechanic of Wings of Resolve at the area where you land. Hunter's Determination triggers when you are inflicted with Stun, Daze, Knockback, Pull, Knockdown, Taut, Float, Fear, Launch, or when you are sunken, granting you 8 seconds of ages as it creates a shard of Faith Trap at your location. The trap endures for 10 seconds, grants you 3 seconds of stability, and cripples enemies for 6 seconds caught inside its radius. Zealot's Aggression adds one and a half seconds of Cripple to the passive effect of Spear of Justice and boosts your damage to Cripple targets by 10%. Bulwark buffs Shield of Courage, increasing its duration by 2 seconds and its size by 33%. Hunter's Fortification removes a condition when you successfully block attacks and reduces your damage taken by 10% when you have no conditions. Heavy Light modifies Deflecting Shot to enable it to knock down enemies with each hit. The trait has a recharge cooldown of 10 seconds. You are also granted 6 seconds of stability when you do knock down or pull an enemy. Big Game Hunter focuses on Spear of Justice's active mechanic, inflicting 10 seconds of vulnerability to tethered enemies and increases the damage dealt to that tethered enemy by 10%. That's all the current traits for the Guardian. Congrats, you have survived, but perhaps you are already asleep. We will take a moment here so that you can get up, stretch, get some coffee before we soldier on. Anyways, my caffeine fuel friends, it's time to talk about builds. When thinking about creating a build, you should not only be thinking about your traits. In Guild Wars 2, a good build is created by synergizing your weapons, traits and skills, but this is only the beginning. The stats on your armor and weapons, and the sigils and runes you upgrade them with are vital too. And we must not forget infusions for ascended armor wearers. A good build marries all these components together to ensure your traits, weapons and every part of your hard-earned gear is working together to give you the best possible throughput. It's common in other titles to have a one build fits all mentality, but this does not fit well with Guild Wars 2. You will need to use different builds for different game types, often needing to swap out skills, traits and weapons on an encounter by encounter basis. So get used to chopping and changing on the fly. All you need to be is out of combat to do it. If you want to jump into World v World, player versus player, fractals and raids, and be an effective team member, you need to know what role you want to fulfill and the best build and skill usage for that role. Some will cry elitist jerk at this point, but to my eyes, it's about teamwork. It's about caring about the success of your group and working together collectively towards a common goal with everyone putting in time and effort and energy. To be clear, I am not saying you should sacrifice your personal enjoyment for the greater good. There is a balance which needs to be found. But let's hop on a tangent here. As with everything in life, the ability to clearly communicate your ideas and concerns with friends and comrades is key. Whether you're a guild, a squad, a 10-man, a 5-man group tackling challenging content, you will either succeed or fail based on how well you cooperate. Now, voice comms are your friend, and I recommend them for fun, but most assuredly for challenging content using the push to talk options to help you self-edit for when you find yourself screaming incoherently at your monitor. Trust me, we've all been there. 
For raids and fractal builds, I recommend Quantify's website. They do in-depth guides covering all aspects of your build, including skill rotation demonstration videos, which are invaluable. For rated PvP and World v World, I recommend metabattle.com. These sites will help you get on the path to understanding the Guardian and its different roles for different game types. I will not be covering the full rotations of the builds here, it's not feasible time-wise, but I will be outlining the builds and pointing you in the direction of the sites. To be clear, I am not the author of these builds. All credit goes to the sites who host and maintain them update after update. They have my gratitude and admiration for supporting the community all this time and helping old and new players alike shine on the field of battle, or at least in my case, not face palm too hard. So let's look at the individual builds for the different game types. Both the raid and fractal build, which I'm about to talk about, are close range, melee, high damage output, with the raid build being viable for casual clears, not optimal for speed runs. Both builds buff your group with Aegis via Shield of Courage and offer a lovely boost to healing with Wings of Resolve. For new raiders, the Hammer Guardian even has a relatively non-brain melting rotation to memorize. Hooray! So, this build uses full Berserker stats on Hammer, Scepter, Focus, as well as your Trinkets and Doodads. The Hammer upgrade components are Superior Sigil of Force and Accuracy. On the Scepter and Torch, you will find the Superior Sigil of Air and Force are best. Your Armor stats are all Berserker, with Superior Runes of the Scholar to finish off your full Zerker Meta Mania. The trait selections are as follows. Zeal, 2, 3, 3, which is Fiery Wrath, Kindled Zeal, and Symbolic Avenger. In the honor line, the traits are 2, 3, 2, which is Protective Reviver, Empowering Might, and Writ of Persistence. The Dragon Hunter traits are 1, 2, 3, which is Piercing Light, Zealot's Aggression, and Big Game Hunter. The healing and utility skills are as follows. For healing, Shelter, and then Test of Faith, Procession of Blades, Bane Signet, with the elite skill, Dragon's Maw. There is a link in the description so you can hop over to the Quantifies website. They have even taken the time to rate this build against the different current bosses. This build utilizes the same armor and trinkets and whatnots as the raid build. However, the fractal build will utilize the greatsword, the scepter, and the torch. Full zerker all the way, but for weapons, the greatsword and the scepter and torch use superior sigil of force and superior sigil of impact. The traits utilized are zeal, 113, which is fiery wrath. Zealot's Blade and Symbolic Avenger. The Radiance traits used are 332, which is Healer's Retribution, Retribution, and Perfect Inscriptions. The Dragon Hunter traits are 123, which is Piercing Light, Zealot's Aggression, and Big Game Hunter. The Healing and Utility skills recommended are Shelter for Healing with Procession of Blades. Bane Signet and the elite skill Dragon's Maw. Because of the diverse nature of fractal encounters, there are a number of skill options you should consider for the empty slot, but they are too numerous to list here. Again, there is a link in the description so you can hop over to Quantify's website to see their brilliant full guide, which gives full rotations for this build and also gives advice for the optional skill, breaking down your choices for each of the Fractal's different encounters. There is even advice for Fractal's where the nighttime mechanic comes into play. Heading over to metabattle.com for the player versus player guide types. Builds there are rated by the community and you will find lots of information and feedback about them in the comments at the end of each build. 
because Meta Battle covers numerous builds for all game types and because most community websites are run in the spare time of the curator, it can sometimes lag behind in respect of balance changes and updates, so do bear that in mind. To be honest, for the sheer amount of information they provide and they have to administrate, I think they do a fantastic job regardless. So, caveats in place, let's have a look at the core guide for World v World. The Core Guardian Hammer Frontliner. This is a build for the thick of battle, offering strong party support with cleanse, crowd control and fair spike damage. The armor, trinkets, doodad, weapon, weapons recommended are all with celestial stats, but you can use marauder stats for extra damage or soldier stats for more defense. They recommend the armor rune, superior rune of durability for survivability, and to boost boon duration for your group. The weapon options are hammer and staff, with superior sigil of energy and concentration for both weapons. For healing and utility, the options they recommend are receive the light for healing, and then stand your ground, purging flames, retreat, and renewed focus for your elite skill. The traits used are Valor 2 to 1, which is Smite Conditions, Strength in Numbers, and Altruistic Healing. For the Honours line, they recommend 2 1 1, which is Shield of Absorption, Honourable Staff, and Pure of Voice. And finally, Virtues, they recommend 3 2 3, Master of Consecrations, Absolute Resolution, and Indomitable Courage. If there is more than one Guardian in your party running Strength of Numbers, you can switch to the Communal Defence trait. This build also has a great sort of variant for any who prefer that weapon option. The staff is used for battle preparation, stacking swiftness, crowd control and granting might to your group. Your greatsword or hammer are used as your primary damage weapon. For PvP, the Bunker Skirmisher Symbolic Dragon Hunter is the build I am recommending. That is quite a mouthful. This sustained bunker build uses sword, shield and mace focus, both sets utilising the superior sigils of cleansing and energy. The rune choice is superior rune of speed and mender's amulet, but you can swap out mender's for marauders for additional damage output. The traits are Honor 222, which is Shield of Absorption, Pure of Heart, and Writ of Persistence. And then we're into Valor, which is 212, which is Smite Conditions, Stalwart Defender, and Monk's Focus. The Dragon Hunter traits are 1 1 1, which is Piercing Light, Shards of Faith, and Hunter's Fortification. There is also a free to play variant for this build, replacing Dragon Hunter with Virtues using 2 2 3, which is Retaliatory Subconscious, Absolute Resolution and indomitable courage. On meta battle, there are notes for best usage of skills for both these builds and advice about rotations. There is community feedback. So I highly recommend you heading over there and taking your time and enjoying these builds. There are links below to all the builds mentioned. Quantify and meta battle have not asked me to promote their sites. I mention them here because they are held in high regard by countless players and because I personally use them. Please do show them some love for their hard work and dedication to the cause. So that's the end of part four. I hope this instalment acts as a reference for you, helping you to better understand the traits available for the Guardian and pointing you in the right direction when it comes to finding a build you enjoy. In the final episode, part 5, I will step back and veteran players will share with you their advice, opinions and insights about their experience and journey to 80 and beyond. 
We will also be fashion warsing the hell out of the Gallant Guardian with screenshots and images from you lovely viewers. I will do my best to do justice to every single image you guys have been kind enough to share with me. Trust me, your avatars are safe with me. If you would like to share your experience as a Guardian player or wish to see your blue angel shine on the silver screen, there are links in the description and you still have a few days to get those submissions in. I want to thank everybody on YouTube, Twitter and Reddit. I am so grateful for all of your views, your support, your advice and comments and feedback. Much love to you all. I also want to show some love to my patrons who directly support me and my content and put up with my ramblings and silliness on Discord. I will work hard every day to create content worthy of your kind support. Thank you so much, guys. If you are thinking of joining the wonderful community here at Guild Wars 2, there are referral links below for both the free-to-play game and the Heart of Thorns expansion. Thanks to the generosity of ArenaNet, when you use these links to purchase the game, it directly supports my channel. Please give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and a thumbs down if you didn't. And as always, thanks for watching.